in the news. Just real quick, two seconds each. Yeah. Okay. So this is a there's a cool FOIA thing that's going on. It looks like it's going to go our way. Um, the USDA was claiming that program data was exempt, so they didn't have to declare which corporate recipients of food stamp monies there were. So basically, all of your food stamp tax money was going into a huge black box, and there was no way you as a taxpayer would ever be able to know uh, which uh, businesses were the recipients of those monies. So hopefully that is going to change, although I think it got kicked down to another judge, and now there's going to be a little bit more time on it. But that is something that develops, and if you care about transparency in government, like you should care about transparency in food. So that's that. Next. Um, yeah, in the meantime, we keep on subsidizing GMO crops, and if scientists don't know better, I don't know who else is supposed to know better, uh, but you can read all of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages which summarily just say that GMOs are, uh, and the way that they have been grown uh, is hugely problematic for the world, it's hugely problematic for carbon, and uh, global warming, and the land, and human health, and everything else. It's just the worst. All right, next. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so how about those California vegetables? Really delicious, right? Well, uh, we might not be able to have those forever. Uh, drought conditions also happening in other very majorly produce, uh, producing parts of the world. In the meantime, in Illinois, we have some of the best soils in the world. I think it's like Illinois and the Ukraine have like the best soils in the world. Uh, however, we grow almost no food for ourselves to eat. We grow almost completely commodity crops. Uh, to be shipped worldwide in the, the global commodities market or whatever. So the weird thing is, is that it might not even be a policy thing. It might be uh, a, just a total like need thing. Like how many areas in the world will even be able to grow fruits and vegetables? We might be the only one. So we may as well do that now. Um, cool. Next up, um, I don't know. Some of y'all work with Obama or whatever, right? Can one of you guys give him a call and tell him to stop this stuff? <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh, yeah, corn ethanol still, huge loser for carbon, huge loser for energy, huge loser for petroleum. Horrible idea all around, but still uh, catching huge uh, government gravy. So and we should have uh, uh, pulled the graphic, but there's a good graphic. If you go back to that my plate graphic of how the government tells you to eat, they have a my plate graphic for funding broken down in the farm bill and what it goes to, and you just, it's all grains, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a trippy thing, right? On the one hand, the USDA is like, here's how you should eat. And on the other thing, they're like, here, farmers, here's a bunch of money to grow stuff that you totally shouldn't eat. So, yeah. Uh, next. Oh, no, Chipotle, sorry. Uh, obligatory. <laughs> um, say goodbye to avocados, say goodbye to guacamole. You're not going to be able to get it uh, without a significant cash outlay. So um, that's going to be wrecked. Uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye now. Buy it. Buy your. For no other reason, it saved the block. <laughs> um, so as you can see, um, uh, this is if you go to the Environmental Working Group, they have a really, really good data portal for farm subsidy money and where it goes, and specifically where and how, and what all those programs are for year to year. Uh, as you can see again here, uh, uh, especially crops, aka as Annie would call them, food, do not even make the top ten list <laughs> in Illinois. So uh, next. Oh, whoops. Next. <laughs> um, another thing, food deserts. Can we stop talking about food deserts, please? It is not a metrical term. It doesn't have any meaning. We can say food deserts, but there is no meaning. It doesn't mean anything. Does, can anybody describe to me exactly what a food desert means? Metrically? Cool, yeah, we can pretty much stop, stop using those terms. You guys might suggest other terms. Other terms might be suggested or used. We use food environments, we use food access, and we just, generally speaking, like to talk about specific communities and their specific challenges. Um, whereas, it's very easy if you define, uh, oftentimes, uh, food deserts are also very car culture oriented. So food desert uh, statistics are often quoted by how long you have to drive in order to get to a grocery store, right? Well, first of all, we don't need any grocery stores, and we don't need any driving. So the fact that we're describing food deserts based on these metrics doesn't even make any sense in the first place. And for instance, if for instance, as, when, as, as was announced last year, that a bunch of food deserts had been healed or whatever the, the thing was or whatever they were saying, the fact is, is that even if you have an area that's, let, let's say, technically moves from a food desert area to a non-food desert area, well, what about like a senior residence building that's in that non-food desert area where those seniors still have like almost no access to fresh, healthy foods? It's like, are they all of a sudden not living in a food desert? You know what I mean? Like, they're totally in, in their in their own food desert. So we need to be much more specific and much more metrical when we talk about food access challenges, and not just be like food desert this, food desert that, heal the food deserts. It doesn't have any meaning. All right, next up. <laughs> 